Brian, let's talk about, uh, you know, we, we come out of the Petri dish, we're putting steel in the ground and getting these capabilities out into the bases, out into the, uh, the ships, et cetera. And I'm sure they're calling you. Give us the state of the state. Yeah, thanks, Luke. And uh, just to echo on the, two, uh, the previous presenters here on this panel, um, things are going extremely well for us. And I'll, I'll talk about a couple different fronts, right? So first and foremost is still building out the 5G network. Great strides over last year, the last couple of years, actually. Um, very excited. Actually, our first 5G military installation was out in the West Coast at uh, MCAS Miramar, which we were very excited having that. And and going off of Tom and, and Juan's earlier comments as well, is now we have expanded actually to mostly all of the military installations in CONUS, which we're very excited uh, to actually have uh, fence line coverage as well as outside the fence line, because we understand these military bases are small, uh, small cities, if you will. Um, so we're very excited about the expansive coverage of 5G and also pushing the envelope, right? So you've heard a couple things here when Dr. Tom Rendell is like, okay, looking at 6G, we're already gathering requirements for 6G where we wanna go. Uh, so it never stops here, which is very exciting, but also aligning with the level of efforts. As I mentioned, you know, building out the public network uh, for line of effort one, we've also worked with R&D projects for the other, uh, other efforts, if you will, on the tactical aspects. Uh, but I would say not only building out the commercial networks, you know, something that gets lost is actually the pyramid vehicles for the DOD in particular, right? So specifically on Navy Spiral 4, which is the main mobility contract for all DOD, there's actually 5G plans and uh, devices on there, which the previous contract, Navy Spiral 3, didn't have those capabilities, right? So not just building out the network, the networks are great, but if you can't connect them, you don't have a means of procurement, doesn't do anybody really anybody, anybody any good. So uh, actually being one of the carriers awarded that contract is a very exciting for us. So having the coverage, the public network also supporting the efforts from an R&D standpoint, as well as tactical. And then as the government moves and actually puts uh, government acquisition procurement vehicles now can actually take advantage of these great services. So the future is very bright for 5G. Yeah, 